Last week you asked me how we can manage secrets on Kubernetes. In particular, you wanted to know if we can use a CI-CD tool to automate the deployment of secrets on a Kubernetes cluster. In this video, I will propose different secret management strategies for Kubernetes. And in particular, I will showcase one of them, which is the GitOps pull approach with Flux and secret operations by Mozilla. I chose this approach because it is secure and quite easy to demonstrate. We don't need any particular piece of infrastructure. All we need is just a Kubernetes cluster. Any flavor we do, you can use MicroKTS, Minikube, whatever you wish. And then we just need a Git repository. That's all. Before we start looking at the automation options, I'm going to put some suspense music because I need to warn you about some security risks. In a default Kubernetes configuration, secrets are stored and encrypted on the underlying data store. And if you don't configure RPEC on the API, anyone can access, retrieve and modify those secrets. Enabling RPEC is not enough to prevent that someone steals the secret. You need to make sure that you apply the principle of least privilege. And you don't need to give authorities on secrets and pods. Anyone with the authority to create pods or execute commands on pods can use that access to extrapolate secrets from your cluster. The risk is even bigger if the pods are privileged, because that access can be used to escape on the node where they are running and at that point anyone can steal secrets and anything sensitive. I will cover these issues in another video and I will link it on the description or show it on screen. Let's get started with the automation options. Let's start by understanding the simplest scenario first, which is creating secrets on Kubernetes using the kubectl. In this case, the kubectl command is translated into an API request to the kube API server that validates and authorizes the request. Once this step is done, secrets are stored on etcd. This approach is fun if you're experimenting with Kubernetes, preparing for a certification, but you cannot use it in a professional context. It lacks proper security controls, auditability, and it is difficult to scale should you manage more than one environment. A very common approach is to use a CI-CD tool like GitLab CI, GitLab Actions, Jenkins, in this approach, secrets are stored on the CI-CD tool and managed on it. When necessary, secrets are pushed to the Kubernetes cluster during a CD pipeline. The advantage of this approach is that it is easy to implement if you perform CI-CD already. It does not require a new service or any new piece of infrastructure. However, there are two security concerns. The first one is that you or your company might not be comfortable with storing secrets on the CD tool. And the other one is that you need to expose the Kubernetes cluster and its credentials to the CD tool. We can improve this option by using a proper secret store. It could be either one of the services offered by the main cloud providers or a tool like AshiCorp Vault. In this setup, the secrets are stored on the secret store and they are retrieved by the CD pipeline only on need. The advantage is obvious. Now we are using a solution purposely built to manage secrets. It will be much easier to audit changes and also to achieve some level of compliance with a security standard. On the other hand, we still did not solve the issue where we need to expose Kubernetes and its credentials to the CD tool. The next option we got is using the CSI driver. The CSI driver is a daemon set that is installed in the Kubernetes cluster. Its responsibility is to fetch secrets from the third-party secret store and mount them as volumes on the pods whenever requested. This is the first option that is solving the issue of granting Kubernetes access to an external tool. We shifted to a pool approach. We are still leveraging all the features that the secret store gives to us in terms of security and auditability. But on the pod and deployment side, we can leverage the secrets natively with the Kubernetes constructs. The only downside is that we are adding a daemon set that we need to configure and potentially manage. 
This option is less straightforward than using a CI-CD tool. However, if you want me to demonstrate how to set up a CSI driver, leave me a comment on the section below. And finally, we got to our last option, which is the GitOps approach. This is the option I will show you on Terminal. As I told you before, we just need a Kubernetes cluster and a Git repository. We will be using two tools, which is Flux CD, that it's a tool that allows us to perform CD in a GitOps fashion. And then we're going to use SOPs or Secrets Operations, which is a tool developed by Mozilla to encrypt portions of a manifest file. SOPs is able to integrate with secret stores on the major clouds like AWS, Azure and GCP, but it can also use other algorithms like AGE, it's pronounced AGE, not AGE, because the author is Italian, and BGP. For my tutorial, I'm going to use AGE because I don't want to depend on any external cloud provider. As you can see in the diagram, in this option, we use asymmetric encryption. We store the public key in Git, while we create a secret with the private key in the Kubernetes cluster. The public key can be used with SOPs to encrypt portions of the Kubernetes secret manifest, making them safe to store on the repository. Flux then performs a reconciliation and stores the secrets in Kubernetes while decrypting them on the fly using the private key that we have generated before. The main advantage of this approach is that we are not exposing the Kubernetes credentials to an external tool. We are also using Git as the secret store and that gives us visibility and auditability thanks to its history. We know exactly who created the secret and when. We can also leverage all the security controls that come with the Git repository, like branch protection and force code reviews. And finally, we can jump on the terminal and we can see how we can do secret management on Kubernetes with GitOps. Let's go. The first thing we need to do is install Flux and Dage. It takes one command line. Keep in mind I'm using Ubuntu, so if you're using another OS, it's better you check the installation instructions on the official documentation. To install Flux, we just download and execute a shell script. While to install Age, we download the executable and move it to the proper bin folder. The next step is to bootstrap Flux. Before that, we need to generate an access token that is going to give Flux rights to create and modify repositories on the source control service we intend to use. In this case, I'm using GitHub. So I'm setting the GitHub token variable. Now we can invoke the flux bootstrap GitHub command with the following arguments. Owner is the name of our GitHub account. Repository is the name of the repository we want flux to create. Path is the folder where we want to store the manifest that flux is going to use to bootstrap. And personal is the type of GitHub account. If you are using an organization account, then the command would be slightly different. What is happening right now is that Flux is creating the repository, pushing the manifest files and performing the first reconciliation, which should create some deployments on our Kubernetes cluster. Let's verify if the deployments are there and ready. Good. At this stage, you can even access the GitHub webpage and navigate through the repository if you wish. As you can see, there are already three manifests committed. Now that we know that all is fine, we clone the repository and we create a folder when we are going to commit the public key. After that, I invoke the AGI keygen. It outputs a public key on the standard output and I save that to a file because I want to commit it to the repository. The file agi.agi is a private key and we need to create a Kubernetes secret with it. Once the secret is created, I can put the private key in some password manager and I delete it from the host. We should just have the public key now and we can commit it to the repository. Next phase is to generate the secret manifest. First we use kubectl. I create a secret named db with literal value pass equals very secret. I use the dry run flag and output as YAML so we can save it to a file. 
As you can see, this is a typical secret file. Note that the pass value is just encoded and not encrypted. We can retrieve the original value by using base64 with the dash d flag. Our goal is to encrypt the password value so only Flux can decrypt it on the Kubernetes cluster using the private key. To do that, we use SOPs. First, I save the public key as an environment variable. And then I invoke SOPs using the encrypt and encrypted regex flags. I want to encrypt only the data or string data portion of the secret manifest. We also add the in place flag so we modify the DB YAML file. Let's have a look at the result. And there it is. The pass value has been encrypted. If you are wondering why we are not encrypting the entire file, the reason is that we want to give visibility on which secret names and keys are available to developers, so they don't need to do any guessing when they define a deployment that requires to mount a secret. Anyway, now let's commit the secret to the repository. If we try to get the secret with kubectl, nothing is found. The reason is that we did not set up the Flux customization that is going to monitor our secrets folder on Git. To do that, we use the Flux create customization command. I'm using secret as the customization name. The source is the same we use for the bootstrap phase. I could have used another Git repository if I wish. Path is the directory that I want to reconcile and the decryption provider and secrets are necessary to decrypt the secrets manifest on the fly before storing them on Kubernetes. We wait for the reconciliation to complete and we check if the secret is there. Yes, there it is. Now let's verify if we can read the pass value. Perfect, it's done. We completed the tutorial. And this is the end of the video. We look at multiple options and we demonstrated the GitOps approach. Now you should have enough information to perform your own POC and improve the way you make secret management in your company. This video was a request from one of you. As I told you, I'm here to help, so if you need support, feel free to ask it in the comment section below or connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter and other social media. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet because that helps me a lot and helps me deliver more content like this. That's all, have a great day or night and see you next time.